without you. For those of you that have watched me do this sort of job before, I'm about to start cleaning the undercarriage and underside of this uh, Porsche. Let's get some light. Looking a bit tired and worse for wear. And uh, we're going to try and give it a good clean up and make it look presentable. And uh, we'll repaint the hubs as well, the calipers, again, they could do with a good clean. So, that's what we're going to be doing this afternoon. I'll try and so show some of it while I'm doing it. Um, I'm just going to get myself ready and get the chemicals that I'm going to use. See you in a bit. For those of you that have watched me do this sort of job before, I'm about to start cleaning the undercarriage and underside of this uh, Porsche. Let's get some light. Looking a bit tired and worse for wear. And, uh, we're going to try and give it a good clean up and make it look presentable and uh, we'll repaint the hubs as well, the calipers, again they could do with a good clean. So that's what we're going to be doing this afternoon. I'll try and so show some of it while I'm doing it. Um, I'm just going to get myself ready and get the chemicals that I'm going to use. See you in a bit. So after starting the initial clean, we started getting the tar off. Uh, got it off the pipes. Got it off this part of the inner flitch and chassis. Um, Recoating the plastics at the moment and as you can well I don't know if you can see actually but we're now letting the TARDIS sit in the uh, plastics to soften up the rest of the the tar that's uh, gathered on it see the tar spots there so I'm just going to keep spraying it and dissolve them and I want it completely tar free uh, before the coatings go on but you can see it's doing its job there I'll just have to keep applying it and uh, keep scrubbing so uh, calipers already looking a lot better I'll give the hub a good clean because that's going to be painted and so far the, the pipe work and the lower suspension part there I'm just going to keep going um, and let's get the arch, the complete thing done. I'll see you in a bit.
all starting to come up nice and clean now a um, few bits you know that the the paint's actually worn away from but it is what it is it's uh, you know 30 years old or something but it's all looking nice and clean just get up and show you All the plastics there, looking good. Calipers come up well. A couple of touch-ins to do on it, but suspension looking clean. So I think next job, paint the hub. See you soon. Hi, I've spent about 10 minutes just giving this uh, back plate a rub down on the back of the exhaust because it's going to uh, look a bit grubby against the wheel arch when I've completed it and I treat all the black it's going to uh, look a little bit rusty so I've been giving it a bit of a flat down just to remove the surface rust and now I've put an old pad on the polisher and I'm going to use some autosaw on the pad and I'm going to give it a quick polish Just make it look a bit more presentable if anybody sticks their head under the car. But a lot of this, I do for my own satisfaction, not everybody else's. You know, it finishes off, you know, the job. You know, when uh, all this inner arch is treated, when it's finished, I want it all to look nice and fresh. Now obviously I'm doing videos as well, so at least, you know, the owner will be able to watch the video and see what's been done. And obviously, you know, we want to do a sort of job and a lot of people don't really understand you know, the depth that detailing can go to. And um, we like to show them, to be fair. You know, this is never going to be a mirror finish, but it's a damn sight better than it did earlier. I might give it just another one, but I'm sure you could see the difference. And of course, with the orb now being painted, once it's all treated, I want it to look fresh as a daisy, so it all helps. So, I'll see you on the next bit. Good morning. Bit of an update on uh, the 993. I've endeavoured to uh, try and get the bumper as good as I can get it so that we can assess what we're going to do with it later on well you could see clearly the damage that was there previously i've been touching in um some of the scratches which will be flatted and polished to see if we can hide them the rough scratches around there they're still visible if you really want to look at them but they don't stand out but then we come to this side of the bumper that had the bad damage that you'll see on the pictures I'll put up with this and as you can see uh, it's more or less got rid of all of the damage 
Um, there are scratches, deep scratches still there, but they are masked uh, what's left. The wheel arch I finished off yesterday um, painting the hub and polishing the exhaust. I'll get some light in here later and uh, show you exactly what what I've done but the plastics have had one dressing and they'll get another before I bolt this back up but it is starting to look nice and fresh the pipe works nice and clean the suspension has all been cleaned and uh, it is looking good I've got a couple of little touch-ins to do on the caliper I'm gonna paint the wheel nuts but it's looking fresh um, if I can get this bumper which is the worst panel on the car if I can get it to this I don't see any reason you can see some of the original where I haven't polished um, but you can see the difference what we're achieving, it's just taking time, that's all. But there is no end date for this car, it'll be finished when I think it's good enough. So, that's the update so far. I'll show you a bit more later. See you later. The underside of the tray, got it outside ready to clean. And again, that'll be in later. Oh yeah, it's Ted from the Devils in the Detail. Today we've started coating the uh, engine cover with matte black. Uh, that's had two coats, just leaving that for a bit. And because the weather's so nice outside, decided I was going to clean the rest of the wheel arches out here today. I can make a bit more mess. Um, you can see plenty of road grime been there for years bit of oil around the uh, turbo clean that off try and get it all nice and clean and then once it's inside again I'll do uh, I'll repaint the hubs um, but I'm gonna try and do the, the rest of I've done one I've got three to do so I've armed myself with some degreaser G101 and some tardis for the tar spots a uh, bucket full of various bushes brushes and uh, my motorcycle mechanics knee roller and the power washer so I'm gonna get on and start scrubbing and uh, we'll have a look later I'm working on the 993 and the bonnet has been painted and they've covered this with overspray so what I'm doing is I'm flattening the overspray down with a scotch bright pad and then I'm going to repolish this edge so that you can't tell that it's ever been painted um, you know by the overspray so just another little 
detail that I'm going to try and do. You know, it's an expensive car, and uh, obviously want to make it look as original as possible, even if it has a paintwork. So you want the next one? Hi. Well, I've flattered it, and I've just started polishing. And I just thought I'd uh, just show you what I'm using to polish it. I've got a cone on my Dremel. And this cone foam sponge can get into the edge. Probably take a little bit longer than using a normal polisher, but a normal polisher won't go in to this edge running along there. So because I'm trying to hide the fact that it's had paint, I'm trying to remove all traces of the feel of overspray from the bonnet so it just doesn't appear obvious, you know, when somebody opens the bonnet. I just wanted to give you the general idea of what we're doing. Right, let's wipe that down and have a look. Yeah, it's starting to come up quite nice. Still traces of the lacquer there, but we can only do what we can do. But that's a lot better. Okay. I'm just trying to remove some of the overspray from the scuttle panel. Uh, I'm still using the Dremel with the foam cone head. See if I can get, give you a closer shot now. Not a mirror finish, but it certainly doesn't look like overspray. Now when you open the bonnet, you can see that uh, I've polished on the underside of the bonnet already and the scuttle panel also looks nice and clean and polished especially around the edges Probably a better view from from this side. You can see all oh, looks nice and tidy. So 
So I can now empty the carpet out. I'm going to empty the carpet out and clean all the flitch panels. Um, and then eventually the carpets will be cleaned before reinstallation. So it's coming on. It's the little details that, you know, most people don't even look at, but when they open the bonnet, you hope that, it, you know, it's going to look as nice as the rest of the car. So. Looks pretty good. Just thought I'd show the difference of the uh, the floor pans. Finish that the passenger side, and that looks n nice. And now I'm doing this side. So I'm going to get scrubbing again. See if we can't get this up. Thought I'd uh, show you what's been going on under here. The, the hub's been painted, uh, everything's looking clean and tidy, all the plastic's been treated. And this is the passenger side. Passenger side. Now, let's see if we can get a shot under the car. See all the plastics have been repainted. And the exhaust has been polished up as much as I can do it. Um, yesterday, we did under the floor scrub the floor clean all that is nice and uh, tidy all the plastic covers was removed and repainted and also under the front is also clean scrubbed and today we've started stripping the interior door cards are removed ready for the dent man 
and also I want to change the gaskets on the door handles because uh, they're all damaged and horrible. Seats are out. At least we can clean properly inside the carpet. Make sure that's all cleaned. Seems to be a bit of a dimple in the lever there. We'll get the steamer on that, see if we can uh, get that to return to where it wants to be. And then the seats. We're going to redo this bolster now that's um, sustained somewhere. And the passenger one I've already started. As you can see, that's starting to look a lot better um, with the recolouring. So this one is going to be cleaned shortly. Make sure there's no dirt in there before we start cleaning. Under the bonnet. There's going to be some individual uh, videos that I've done that show uh, the trouble I've had getting this section to stay up. Also, we've had to drill the bolts out of each of these ends so that we could uh, get the carpet out. But that's all done and got aircraft grade steel, new bolts in it. So. They're going nowhere. Under the bonnet, it's polished. Uh, there was some overspray for some from some bodywork, and that's all been taken care of. All the edges have been polished, as have the scuttles. All the scuttle was covered um, in overspray and that's all been done. We fitted new hydraulic rams uh, to the bonnet, that wouldn't stay up on its own. They've been replaced and that's done. So um, we get the interior sorted out and then we can start on the paintwork. Um, that's another story. So that's it for now. I'll see you in a bit. Hi, welcome to another day at the Devils in the Detail. Today, I'm going to try and restore, repair um, the carpet from under the bonnet. Basically, this has been loaded up with tools and not just the triangle. And it's now, as you can see, it's all out of shape. So I'd like to repair it so that it sits nice against the carpet when it goes back in. The first problem I had is this carbon strut brace that threads through the carpet and comes out across the strut and both of the allen bolts that hold it on have been rounded off. So. I've loosened the one end and unscrewed it. Notice I've marked it so I know exactly where the nut has to go back to. Um, and I've unthreaded it from the carpet. So now I can actually work on this part of the carpet before it's all cleaned and ready to go back in. So basically what I'm gonna try and do, I'm gonna try and find a suitable size block that'll fit inside to give me the shape back. And then I'm going to put the steamer on it and see if I, I can't manipulate it back into shape. Um, it is, it looks like a piece of leather that's in the back. So I should be able to straighten it up, um, you know, with a little bit of manipulation. So 
I'm going to give that a try. So I'm going to get everything ready. See if I can find something the right size. I might even use the original uh, triangle. I'll show you what's supposed to go in there. That's what fits in there. Just a warning triangle, you've probably all seen them. Uh, I could probably do it over that, it's uh, plastic covered so it's not going to hurt it. Um, so that's what I'm going to try and do. So I'll get myself ready and we'll see what happens. Right, what I've now done, I found a suitable size block of wood. I've wrapped the wood in masking tape to go against the carpet so I don't mark it. Put a clamp on with the triangle box inside. And now, just a cartridge steamer. We're gonna steam it and make sure we get it nice and warm. And then we'll let it relax and see whether it's actually going back into shape. Now obviously the steam's got to penetrate the carpet and the leather. So it's going to take a little bit of while, you know, to warm it up enough. I'll let this relax for a bit now, let it cool down and then we'll see if it's actually done anything. I'll repeat the process again before I go any further because I doubt whether that has got warm enough to actually go through. The leather's quite thick. So we'll try it again in a minute. I'll give it two or three hits. Now, with uh, the steam machine, I'm just going to give it a last one and then we're going to leave it to, we'll leave it to settle and uh, re-harden and I hope that we've managed to get it back to the shape. Just letting the steam get through the carpet into the leather. And at the end of the day, it's the leather that's got to be straightened up, not the carpet. Right, we'll leave that to cool off. And then I'll uh, take the clamp off and see if it's worked. We'll see you shortly. Oh yeah. Well I've left the uh, carpet for 20 minutes to cool down. I've now removed what was inside it, which was the warning triangle. And as you can see, it's standing nice, proud and straight again. So when it goes back in the car, which will be up that way, you can now read the Turbo S rather than see it kinked and drooping down. So I'm very happy with uh, how that's come out. And uh, it should stay like that as long as it's not overloaded again. You know, it's only got the uh, 
the warning triangle that lives in it. So, mind you, that that's quite heavy, I have to say. But when that's in there, I'm very happy. Very happy. And it's uh, going to look a treat. So that's uh, another little repair that's uh, been done. Probably nobody will ever notice, but I know it's been done, and that's the main thing. Um, and I suppose that's the purpose of these videos, really, is to, you know, show people who send the cars in that the there's certain things that they probably never ever noticed that have been done and repaired or made better. Um, and we do like to do what we can to get the car, you know, looking as good as we can. So that'll be the end of that one. So the carpets, uh, I'm going to let this dry and then clean the carpet and then that can go back in. Then I've got to sort out... I'd really like to remove these Allen bolts and replace them. Um, so I think the next thing is we'll find a way of removing them and uh, get some new ones. At least that way, if I want the carpet out in the future, I haven't got to take this, this strut brace from the top of the struts. Um, you can see where they bolt. And, uh, you know, it means I've got to remove the carpet again. And it's quite difficult to twist, like I'd be twisting the bar that way to try and get it past because the, the bonnet line narrows. So, you know, it was a bit tricky to get out. And you don't want to slip and mark anything. So I'll see if we can repair and replace the bolts. Um, also, I've got to carry on and uh, carry on restoring this engine under tray that was quite badly scraped. Now I want to get on and get that done so that can go back on. Um, you know, just tidy it up. I'm not trying to make it look brand new, but certainly, you know, more presentable. You know, the car is a certain age and they do get little bits of damage, but uh, we'll make it look a lot nicer. And then I'll bolt that back on. Um, but my next job will be the strut, strut brace bolts. And uh, see if we can't remove them. Um, you know, I don't want to damage any of the ends. It looks like, you know, if you look at that closely, there's some damage already around that. I think somebody struggled before when they actually rounded the things off. So um, I might repaint that end. Uh, we'll see. You know, it's... Uh, it's one of them but that's another video so i'll see you on the next one